On today's episode of Locked On 76s, Keith and I break down a tough loss to the Oklahoma City Thunder, 133-114. The Sixers fall. They get ready to head on the road trip. But what went wrong in this one on Thursday night? We'll tap into it next right here, Locked On 76ers. You are Locked On 76ers, your daily Philadelphia 76ers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, you are locked on 76ers. I'm Devon Givens from 97.5 The Fanatic Radio in Philadelphia, alongside my co-host and partner, Keith Pompey, the Enquirer.com, Sixers beat writer extraordinaire. What's up, Keith? What's good, man? D, how you been, brother? Oh, man, pretty good. Hanging in there, man. We got to thank everybody for making Locked On 76ers your first listen every day. And remember, Locked On 76ers is free and available on all platforms, including right here at YouTube at Locked On 76ers. Well, Keith, uh, tough loss for the Sixers. Not a good one. Uh, look, 133-114. We can talk about this one a lot of ways, but that's way too many points to give up to the Oklahoma City Thunder, an upcoming team with an all-star guard on their roster and the talent in Josh Giddy, uh, but a tough one overall. And this one, we'll dive into a lot more of what took place on this one. And of course, the Sixers upcoming with the Jazz on Saturday. But Keith, in this one, Sixers got off to a tough start, man. 35 points in the first quarter, down by 10 at the break. Things looked like they were uh, on the up and up in the third quarter. Some of what we've seen from this team before on the comeback but then it was just simply too late. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it. I think the game got away from him when Joel and B picked up his third foul with seven minutes and twenty six seconds left in the uh, second quarter. I agree. And, and and you know, he went out twenty. He was only in there for twenty six seconds. They were down four, and they ended up being down fifteen. Now, they did pull it within ten at the half, but but to me, that was too much ground um, for them to give up. But you know, to me, like, I mean, I, I think we're burning the lead. They got blitz, man. Um, you know, they got blitz. The guards got got destroyed. Uh, you know, it, it got to a point where, you know, they had Maxie and Harden. They were just get. They were getting. It looked like. I mean, let's face it. These are two offensive minded guards who get buckets. And you know, when they played against Detroit. You know, that's Detroit, and and like I told you, James could do stuff against them with one arm behind his back, but it just seemed like against this team, and you got to understand, when they played OKC, OKC the last time, James didn't play, Tyrese didn't play. Well, they exploited them tonight, and it got to a point where they got motivated and got moving to when they put Matisse in there and, and when they put uh, Melton in there, it's like they couldn't stop the bleeding. So I, I feel like like right now, you know, the biggest takeaway for me is the foul trouble and also how Shea Gillis, Gilgis Alexander was able to just destroy people and, and other guys. And I just feel like, you know, with this being their eighth game together as a starting lineup, they got to tweak some things on the defensive end. The MB foul trouble was tough, of course, but – I, I did think they were able to overcome that or going to be able to overcome that, pardon me, even though he got into that foul trouble. That was not the case uh, in the first half. I thought it was a silly foul on B too. Uh, you can question the first two, but that one, you got to know time and situation, especially with the fouls that you do have. I mean, I think that one was on Darius Baisley right there by the basket, going up for a ball fake and you, you jump and you leave your feet. You leave yourself exposed. And even after the foul, he was pointing to James Harden because he wanted the official to call the foul on Harden. But, you know, this one was just a, a silly take foul there by Embiid, and he got baited into it, and he shouldn't have. Then when you talk about the guards, yeah, Milton and Melton were the starting guards on New Year's Eve when the Sixers beat the Oklahoma City Thunder, 18 for Shake, 17 for DeAnthony Melton. And Melton did a pretty good job on Shea Gilgis Alexander that night, Keith. If you remember, he was five for fourteen from the floor, Shea Gilgis Alexander, and he struggled. And a lot of that was because of what DeAnthony Melton was able to do tonight. He got into a too good of a rhythm. Doc Rivers talked about how they had too many straight line drives to the basket, Keith. And 
uh, not being able to, they were so fast that the defenders couldn't help off of their men to maybe cut off a, a driving lane and force a pass and force a tough shot if the player was going to keep it. But those guys were too fast. And it wasn't just Gideon Alexander. There were also times where one of the Jalen's, the Williams guys, drove right by and got a dunk at, at the rim. Lou Dort didn't shoot well, but again, putting the ball on the floor, no resistance. And that's where it was tonight. When you relinquish 133 points, your defense simply was not good. Too many open shots, too many open good looks for OKC, and they shot 51% on the evening as a result. And Shea Gildas is an all-star, man. 37 points, type of player that he is, 20 for Giddy. Yeah, this one, the defense was poor this night, and we already knew Harden and Maxie weren't defensive players in that way, and it was a well-coached game. Their coach talked about how this was one of those games where they follow their um, – followed their strategy, their pregame strategy of what they wanted to do. They executed enough to get a win. Yeah, yeah, they did. They did. And also, you got to give Matisse the Thibault credit, too, because he started in that game, too. And it was a lot of things where him and Melton were the guys on him. But it just seemed like um, Shea Gillis, Gil, Gil, I'm butchering my man's name. Just say but SGA. He, <laughs> SGA. This, it, it, that dude. <laughs> so, so anyway, he is. He, he is. <laughs> he, uh, it just seemed like he got downhill, man, and it got to a point where you come in and you got a guy like that, and he's quick as he can be, and other guys knocking down shots. Um, it, it's tough to to put out the fire, so to speak. Absolutely. All right. When we come back, Keith, we'll tap into a little bit more of what. When ha what happened in this game and why it got away from this team so fast. Sixers had a 13-0 run to start the third quarter. They eventually took the lead. Why was Oklahoma City able to come back and take a 7-0 run themselves and never look back? We'll tap into it next right here on Locked On 76ers. And after a tough game uh, like that, if we were playing it, Keith and I, you know, you're looking for a delicious treat after the game, but don't want all of the fat and the calories as you, even though you ran so much and you sweat and got all that stuff off of you, you're hungry, but maybe you don't want to eat so much. And you got to try a built bar. And we just got through the holidays. And I know a lot of people's goals is to simply eat a little healthier this year, just like me. If you were like me and you want to eat healthier, don't want to compromise that taste. And, you know, you like where you are and you, you want to get some good food, man, I've got the thing for you you got to try Built. With Built, healthy is actually tasty. Seriously, they're so delicious, you won't think they're good for you. You wouldn't. You won't. Perfect for your New Year's resolution. What makes Built so good? Well, for starters, they're covered in 100% real chocolate. That's right, 100% real chocolate. You have peanut butter brownie, churro, coconut almond, and they're only 130 calories and 4 grams of sugar with a whopping 17 grams of protein and you look at that and you say how can that be possible well it is it's very possible especially in those fantastic flavors and i got a new way for you to pick them up you don't have to just go to built.com like you always did for years we've been telling you about that well now you can go to a local walmart or even sam's club that's right you can head to your nearest walmart today walk to the pharmacy section and grab yourself a box of built bars you can pick up a four box of cookies and cream double chocolate or coconut puffs and if you're close to a Sam's Club, run and grab a 13-bar box with our hip flavors, brownie batter, and churro. Folks, you can thank me later. Why can't they thank you today, bro? <laughs> thank me now. Thank me now. Because while you're frustrated with this loss and you want to eat something because you're ticked off, but you don't want to eat and add pounds, get the Bill Bar. Yeah. And thank me now. That's yeah. all. all right. Thank you for making Locked On 76ers your first listen. For your next listen, check out the Locked On Now podcast. Nightly recaps of every NBA game with analysis from our local experts. It's free and available wherever you get your podcast. All right, Keith, um, as, as we talked about that uh, going into the break, 13-0 run for the Sixers coming out of the locker room. Doc Rivers jumped on them and said some things at halftime, and it worked because they came out and they ran them. 13 unanswered points, down by 10 there, now up three. OKC has to call a timeout. Sixers are up, and things are looking good at that point. Can they hold on? 7-0 run from OKC. Uh, what, for you, was a big part of the problem? James Harden, by the way, had seven turnovers with his 24 points. 
He has seven turnovers, but five win the first half. So he only had two in the second half. Keith, how were they able to stop the Sixers 13-0 run and then turn it around? I mean, well, one thing that the turnovers, I mean, I, I think that I, I think that when you play in a team like this, and, and not really the turnovers, but I, I think it to me, it looked like the Sixers were exerting so much energy to get back into the game. And and then defensively, it's like, yeah, you getting in runs and you making stops. But it was kind of sort of like, you know, when they brought their horses back in, it's like, okay, you guys are – and they're like, pew, you, you know what I'm saying? It was like – it was one of those things where they were just exerting so much energy just to get back in the game. And 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 I, I just felt like they were a bunch of young boys. I, I feel like, honestly – that hole when they went down 15 points, and I know they came back, but I think it that put them back a lot. I mean, it did. And then the thing is, they they got timely shots whenever they needed. It was like no one was down there locking anyone out up. Like even Matisse, I'm a, I'm a big Matisse fan. You know that. I, I like Matisse. That's my guy. But he was a minus 27 in 10 minutes and 52 seconds. So. You know, it's one of those things where they just weren't – they couldn't get any stops and guys were just running on them. To me, that was the difference. I mean, it just was. It was. Yeah, I, again, I thought when they when they turned it around, 13 unanswered, up three now, I was like, okay, cool. They, they figured this one out. They got it. This young team, they let them hang around long enough to have confidence in the first half, but now they've taken it. They, they, they've punched them in the gut. I don't know if OKC is going to be able to answer. Not all of them. I know a few of them will. Giddy, SGA, they'll be able to hand it. Lou Dort. But those young guys, how are they going to be had? Look, Williams, Jalen Williams, the bigger Jalen Williams, Garden B, five personal fouls. All right, yeah, he's not going to be able to sustain that. Mike Muscala comes in, no problem at all. Instead, Mike Muscala comes in, he knocks down three or five threes uh, on the night and, and to help them out. So you're right, man. And that, that was just one of those – those things where they brought it, they wanted it more. And I, I wonder if the Sixers took this one as one of those, we got this, we're about to go on a five game road trip with Utah on Saturday. My bags are already packed. Now, you know, that that's, that's the kind of feel it had in this one, Keith. Yeah, it did. Looking it ahead, did. looking ahead. I mean, it, you know what, it, it kind of like looking ahead. I mean, I, I felt like it, you, you could say looking ahead, but I, it felt like, you know, we, we talked about the 76ers the last game where we said this was a team that didn't look past opponents or basically like didn't like overlook them, right? Yeah, looking. And they, and they talked about how they don't do that anymore, but it seems like that was the problem, that they looked at this team and was like, yeah, this team, like, okay, Doc says they play hard, but at the same time, look at us. We're great. We're this, we're that. I mean, because if you notice, some of those passes that they had early on, they were like careless, led to careless turnovers. Terrible. You know what I mean? It's like, yo, you don't have to do that. I mean, it, it looked like they were trying to toy with them a little bit too much as opposed to playing in the game. No, I agree. And uh, that was one of the things that frustrated because they would make these passes and you're like, what are you doing? Why, why, why are you making this pass? Why is it, why is it going this way? Why are you doing this instead of OKC look like the more veteran laden team, even though they're younger, where the Sixers have the veterans on their squad and were unable to uh, keep themselves under control in this one and, and not let all of those things take place. One of the things that I also didn't like Keith was down the stretch where the Sixers were trying to come back. And as they were coming back, they were down six with uh, less than what, five minutes to play. Mm -hmm. And they were down six, but they kept shooting threes. I felt like yeah, they were yeah. some bad shots trying to, trying to get themselves back in it with one shot where you had five minutes, you're down six, work your big man, work your offense and don't force the three. If it's open, fine, shoot it. Even though you're off, you know what? The ones that matter are, there are the ones that knock down in the clutch to, to get the game, to close the game out. I felt like they were trying to get that kill shot and, and have it as 
let's make up this in two shots here when we really only need to just simply take our time, play defense on the other end, and come back and win this game in the end. Yeah, I agree. I agree. It was a lot of that, and they were missing them too. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? So, yeah, you're right. It was kind of like, yo, you know, it looked like they panicked a little bit. And, and you know, and, and me, like, here's the thing. Like, when you're down and you got a team like that, and I shouldn't say panic, but it looked like when they finally turned it on, it was like stuff was rushed. It was – so I don't want to say panic, but it was just like rush shots. It wasn't mm-hmm. taking their time. They That's sped it. up a little bit. They had some turnovers. You know what I mean? It was like they were trying to do a little bit, like you said, a little too much. But to me, that you know, it. it, it but that's what you get when, when you I feel like you come out a little bit too lax, too lax of days ago, and and thinking you're gonna get an easy victory over a team that you destroyed on uh, New Year's Eve. Yeah, absolutely. All right, final segment on the other side, Keith. How about we talk about the uh, second voting returns on the All Star Game? How about that? Yeah, a little interesting, huh? <laughs> yeah, a little yeah. interesting. Let's let's get into that on the other side. As the Sixers fall last night, one thirty three, one fourteen, fall by nineteen. They split the season series with OKC, and we'll get into what it means for the All Star second returns. We'll get Keith to tell us how many more returns, voting returns, we'll hear from the fans. Be crazy. All of that. And uh, we'll get into that next right here on Locked On 76ers. And before we do that, I got to talk to you about LinkedIn. As a small business owner or hiring manager, you know that success in 2023 all depends on the team members you surround yourself with. So as you're trying to figure it out and you want to put a great team around you to make sure your business works and flows and you have all of the great success in 2023, you got to go to LinkedIn. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. With LinkedIn Jobs, you can hire qualify candidates more efficiently by making open roles with people who have the skills, values, experiences to help you achieve your goals. LinkedIn Jobs helps you quickly attract qualified candidates to your open jobs with targeting tools. They go beyond resume data by using insights from your job post company and their 875 million member profiles to put on your posts in front of the most qualified candidates. They take a peek at it. They identify the most qualified candidates on LinkedIn Jobs and connect with them fast and free. LinkedIn Jobs make it easy to screen and rate applicants based on your job qualifications all on the one platform. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to, but faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NBA. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NBA to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Welcome back. Locked on 76ers. I'm Devon Givens. That's Keith Pompey. As we break down the Sixers lost to the Oklahoma City Thunder. Sixers now 25 and 16. Uh, Keith on the campaign. OKC improves to 19 and 23. Sixers now nine games over 500. They don't lose much ground, though, Keith, last night because uh, in the games with, let's say, Boston, every team in front of them, Boston, Brooklyn, Milwaukee, and Cleveland all played last night. Now, Boston at the top of the East right now, they took care and helped the Sixers out by beating the Brooklyn Nets. We even talked about that last time out, Keith, where we talked about um, uh, Kevin Durant being out for a bit. And with him being out for a bit, you have an opportunity to make up some ground. So Brooklyn loses and uh, they lose. So the Sixers are a game and a half back of them for the uh, number two spot in the Eastern Conference. And the same thing with the Milwaukee Bucks. They lost to the to the uh, Miami Heat last night as well. So the Cleveland Cavaliers, they played the Blazers, losing for a good majority of that game. Cleveland beat the Blazers, so they're back in front of the Sixers by a game uh, in the Eastern Conference standing Sixers in the, in the top five. So uh, they, it, you know, was it perfect last night, but it wasn't all that bad because some of the other teams lost in front of them too. But this the uh the um all-star numbers the votings keith all right man we talked about this before with this all-star stuff and how it's gonna lay down sixer fans are not gonna be happy so let's just say that because i've already seen it where if Embiid is not starting in the all-star game a lot of sixer fans have already voiced their displeasure and they're going to be hot the second returns come in keith and joel Embiid 
was fourth now in the front court behind Kevin Durant, Giannis, and Jason Tatum. Now the three where that would, if the voting ended today, and those were the final tallies, and B, even with well over 3 million votes, would not start in the All-Star game. James Harden is third in the guards behind Kyrie Irving and Donovan Mitchell. But the one that Sixer fans will be most ticked off about, although he will make his sixth consecutive appearance, he wouldn't start. It's trending in the wrong direction. Sixer fans were going to be hot. How many more do they do? Is it two more? Yeah, they got uh, they got the third returns, and then after that, then they announce. Yeah, 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 really, yeah, yeah. That's how it goes. Uh, you know, they're not going to be happy. No, nah, they're not. I mean, you know, but the thing is, you kind of see it's a tough one right now because, you know, I, I feel like a lot of it has to do with it was Boston fans saw how MB was was on top of them. I'm talking about um, Jason Tatum and like, OK, we got to stuff it. You know what I mean? We got to do it. And, and and I feel like now is I would really want to see what it looks like next Thursday, because I feel like now there's going to be a couple Sixers fans. <laughs> oh, not a couple, but a lot of them trying yeah. to show him some love. Yeah. You know, I, I feel like that um, there was a time where a lot of people felt like no matter what, Embiid was going to get picked. But, you know, right now, this is tough for the top four because because Jason Tatum is playing so well. You always assume that it was going to be Giannis, uh, Durant, and Embiid as the starters. And now you have Jason Tatum as a, a MVP uh, candidate now. So it's one of those things where you look at it and, and you say to yourself, like, okay, well, it's going to be tough. But I also think it's funny. You think about this. Once KD goes down, then all of a sudden Tatum starts getting also starts getting a lot of like love and 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 this and that like he needs to start. But yeah, I mean I'm, I'm gonna be intrigued. Now here's my thing: like I don't like when they say we got three front court players. Front court, like, right? I don't like that because and and I don't like how that happens for the um for like you know all star. Well, like oh no, this is weird. Like all NBA. You know, you basically like you typically you want a center, one center and two forwards. And now they're saying like you can vote one guy for, you know, one guy for the other one, this and that to me is a joke. Like what you need to do is you just need to always have one center, two forwards and two guards. And, and, And then after that, that's just I mean, leave it alone. Because once you start doing this and then you're going to have like two small forwards and a power forward starting in the all-star game, like you understand what I'm saying? It, it just doesn't make any sense to me. And then you'll have what three power forwards starting. Like it just doesn't make sense. So, you know, I, I, I it's, it's crazy. Um, I mean, I wrote about it, but at the same time, like I think that MB will be fine because he is the guy i think he'll be fine but at the same time the the fan voting uh did kind of like make me do a double take he'll be there the the question is will he be one of the starters and that's the thing he started the first five of his career and looked like he was going to be doing so for sixth but uh, jason tatum is a really really likable person You, you know what i'm saying so even though he's a Celtic, even Laker fans who can't stand him, Sixer fans who can't stand him, especially since they wanted him here, uh, he's, he's, he's a guy that's very well liked and he's going to get a lot of votes. And and B, I, I don't know if it has to do anything where people, you know, his trolling, as you talk about, Keith, where Celtics fans can't stand him and, you know, all that. Toronto, they're not going to vote for him. They, but every, every fan base is going to vote for their guy. This one's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. And I wonder if it'll eventually make a change, make it happen for a change next time, because these guys are all MVP candidates, including Embiid, even with the time that he's missed. He's still in that conversation. And now you're talking about one of the four may not be starting. That's absurd. So it's it's going to be interesting. All right. That'll do it for us tomorrow. We'll uh, reconvene and get back together and actually have one for you on Saturday because we want to talk about the Utah Jazz is game number one 
on the Sixers five game road trip. They will also be playing on Friday, Keith, to um, to uh, play in the first game of the second uh, of a back to back where the Sixers will catch them on on a back to back situation. And one thing I don't know as I look it up really fast, Keith, is uh, where the Jazz will be. Um, will they be on the road or will they be will they be at their arena um, playing this first game of the back to back? It will be at home. They're playing at home against the Orlando Magic. So while the Sixers will be waiting for them, the Jazz don't have to travel for this particular game. All right, that'll do it for us. And we thank you for making Locked On 76ers your first listen every day. Now make your second listen, Locked On NBA, where Locked On experts are covering the biggest stories around the NBA every Monday through Friday. And less than 30 minutes is free and available wherever you get your podcast. Keith, can you let the fine folks know where they can find us today? Yeah, and wherever, wherever. yeah, like my man D said, wherever you get your podcast, you can get this podcast too. But once you go to our YouTube channel, what you need to do is just click on that Liberty Bell. You click on that Liberty Bell, you become an, a new subscriber. In addition to that, you'll get links, um, excuse me, you'll get alerts whenever we do a new podcast. So do that. But also what you need to do is tonight, 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 you got to listen to my man D on 97.5, the Divine Giving Show from 6 to 10 p.m., right? You also need to follow my man on, on Twitter at Divine G975. Follow me on Twitter at Pompey on Sixers. And you can read um, articles today on, um, I mean, you can read my mailbag, that I'm, weekly mailbag that I have. People are asking questions about the Anthony Melton going back in the starting lineup and P.J. Tucker getting them out of there, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of other things. Uh, so you could do that at Inquire.com today. Interesting. Maybe something that we have to talk about because of that as a popular conversation. All right, Keith, have a good rest of your day, man. Really appreciate it. Talk to you tomorrow. All right, bro. Same to you. Thanks, man. Mm -hmm.